This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. Hello and welcome to Into the Multiverse. I'm your host, Josh Peck. So today uh, we have a really interesting story that uh, some records have been broken. Well, one specifically, a new experiment, the Innsbruck experiment, breaks the entanglement record, the quantum entanglement record that could be used in quantum computers. That is a lot of quantum, and we're going to be talking about that today. But first, if you haven't had a chance to do so, make sure you subscribe and click that little bell, because YouTube has decided that subscribing doesn't mean anything anymore. So you got to click the bell, and you got to tell YouTube that you want to be notified every time you get a, uh, every time I put one of these up. And if it doesn't notify you, I've been getting a lot of messages from people saying that they're just not getting notified even when they click the bell. If that is the case, every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. on this channel, you will get a new uh, episode. You can also go to Roku, uh, it's on Vimeo, uh, and skywatchtv.com for more information on all of that. So make sure you check that out. Uh, okay, so scientists in Germany and Aus Austria have achieved a controlled multi-particle engagement in a record of a uh, record system of 20 quantum bits or qubits, which are uh, have, have way more capacity than normal computer bits. Uh, it's, it's incredible technology, and a giant leap forward has been made, even to the point that neighboring groups of three, four, and five quantum bits were seen to have been entangled in such a way that's never been seen before on levels that are unprecedented. Now, again, while this sounds completely science fiction, it sounds really complicated, and it is, you know, we'll be honest, it totally is. <laughs> Uh, but this could pave the way for a, a, a new giant leap. Actually, it is a new giant leap in uh, quantum computing technology, uh, which at some point could very well be uh, as big as the internet was before the internet existed. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But first, what is quantum entanglement? That is something that we've dealt with before on this show. We've done a couple of episodes. Uh, some of you who have been following the show since it started are probably familiar with the term. But just in case you're brand new, we can go over it again. Now, quantum entanglement is the ability for certain particles to be able to communicate with one another at faster than light speeds. Actually, even saying faster than light isn't really accurate. It's, it's at an absolute instant. There is no time interval between uh, when one particle says something and the other particle receives it, in a sense. We could think about it like that. Now, no one knows exactly how this works, but it's possible that it uses higher dimensions, higher spatial dimensions, in order to operate. Now, again, while that just seems kind of crazy and out there, uh, think about a two-dimensional flat plane. Now, if I were to take something and curve it within that plane, all right, and let's say that your field of view is just right here. You can only see this edge and this edge. You can't see how it's connected down here. Now, if I were to push on this edge, you would notice this edge moves really faster than light. You know, if I'm communicating with this edge, this edge is moving uh, right at the same time, right at an instant. Now, it's not faster than light communication between the two edges. It would only look like that to a two-dimensional being uh, because they, can't, they wouldn't be able to see how it's connected underneath. So we could be seeing something similar with quantum entanglement with these particles. There might be a type of extra-dimensional connection that we're not aware of to where if you, in a sense, push one particle in one direction, the other particle responds in kind, seemingly faster than light, but again, not really faster than light. And strangely enough, whenever you see things that seem to bend or break the laws of physics that we know it, that can be an indication of higher spatial dimensions. For example, if you take a triangle and you add up the angles, you come up with 180 degrees. But what if you added up the angles and came up with 190 or 200 degrees? How could that be possible? Well, if you took the triangle and you formed it over a sphere, that's actually opening the angles a little bit more. You're, you're curving it through the third dimension. And then you actually can have more, more than 180 degree angles once you add them all up. So it's not really breaking the laws of physics, but it is, it is, it's bending the laws of two-dimensional physics, if you only think about geometry in that way. Once you add the third dimension, you can get away with a little bit more. So we might be seeing something similar here. When, when the laws of physics seem to be broken, a lot of times it's because extra or higher dimensions haven't been factored in, which is really interesting because if that's what quantum entanglement is, that could be the proof that there's more out there than what we think we know. So it's really interesting. So that also raises the question, if quantum entanglement does utilize higher spatial dimensions in order to operate, 
Uh, now, this would be a natural process, but if we were to take advantage of that within quantum computing or something like that, are we actually sending information through higher dimensions? Uh, and that's something we might want to think about, because if so, what is that doing in the other dimensions, in the higher dimensions? Are there other extra dimensional entities that could possibly uh, read what we're, <laughs> what we're sending? But, you know, of course, it would stand to reason that if that were the case, they could probably do it already. So, uh, so who knows? But uh, they're, they're interesting questions to think about. So this brings up the question, why should Christians even care about quantum computing anyway? It's so complicated. It's so far out there. Uh, you know, it's so far in the future even. Um, who knows who cares let's let the next generation deal with it well that's tempting to think about but this uh, technology is already exists now it, it's it's on the horizon and like I said before I believe that it has the potential to be even bigger than the internet was right before the internet came into being do you remember what the world was like before the internet for those of you who are old enough to to, to remember that um, I, I'm one of the last generations that actually can remember a time before the internet uh, when I was about 12 years old that's that's when our, the school I was going to got the internet and and life radically changed after that. But remember how life was before the internet and look at life now. Drastic difference. Even the way we do business, the way we live our lives, the way we communicate with one another, the way we interact with our family, everything is changed. I believe that quantum computing has that same potential. It could drastically change the world as we know it. Uh, probably in some areas for the better. It could, it could help, certainly like the internet has. But again, uh, just like the internet has, there's going to be some changes that aren't so good uh, as well. So those are all important things that we need to keep our eyes on, but that's why we Christians especially need to pay attention and get a handle on this stuff, because we should be at the forefront of this conversation. With any new technology, it brings up more questions of morality. You know, well, well, what about in this case? You know, if I, if I play a violent video game where I'm killing somebody in the game, is that the same as killing somebody in real life? You know, uh, qu questions like that come up. And it's up to us to teach our kids about uh, morals, ethics, even Christianity, because they're the ones really that are going to be using this quantum computing technology when they grow up. It's going to be the next generation. It does exist today, but it's still being perfected. It's a little ways off from being used on a mass scale. But I believe that our children uh, and our children's children uh, especially are going to be the ones really living in a quantum computing world. So it's up to us to instill good Christian ethics uh, and, and teach them about a relationship with Jesus before it gets there so they're not tempted into things that we might might not even see coming. So that's why it's important. All right. Well, all that being said, th this has been a really interesting development, and I certainly will uh, keep my eye on it. I will keep you informed as new developments arise. And uh, if you want to read the article that this, the information uh, from this episode came from, you can check in the description below if you're viewing this on YouTube. I put the link there. Uh, or you could just look up Innsbruck Experiment, uh, and you can get a lot of information about that. So really interesting stuff. Again, if you haven't had a chance to do so, make sure you subscribe, click the little bell, and leave me a comment. Also, if you could, go ahead and share this video everywhere. Share it on Facebook. Uh, I've noticed that those of you who have followed the into the Multiverse Facebook page. Yes, there actually is one. Uh, but you, you guys have even said that you, you're not getting notifications on that. And I post every week the, the new episode. Uh, so fa Facebook is doing something funny with us uh, Christians and conservatives. They, they, they don't want us to be able to communicate with one, one another. But you know what? We're going to do it anyway. So uh, all that being said, thank you so much. And until next time, take care and God bless. As many as 80% of Americans are carrying a time bomb. A medical crisis in their bodies right now, unaware that they will soon develop prolonged chronic illness, autoimmune disease, or even cancer. Today's frightening truth is citizens are being poisoned every single day without their knowledge. A health epidemic largely brought on by industrialized food is destroying our genetics and immune systems through deadly modified organisms, carcinogenic materials, and life-threatening chemicals commonly found in most of today's processed groceries. Coming this April in the groundbreaking new book, Time Bomb, by Joe Artis Horn and Allie Anderson. 
you'll be put in charge of your health once again as commercial marketing games are exposed and the expose of the year unveils how easy it is to avoid toxic ingredients, identify organic and safe foods, and make healthy eating affordable. You will learn how neuroscience is confirming an amazing gut-brain connection that holds the key to maintaining physical, hormonal, emotional, and mental wellness. With powerful insights from health professionals for maintaining superior physiology and reversing chronic illness without a weight loss diet, Time Bomb is set to become your most important field guide for avoiding a national health epidemic more pervasive than anyone could have ever imagined. Time Bomb, coming this April. There is a genocide of deadly processed foods happening right now in the United States, creating a health epidemic more pervasive than anyone ever imagined. But now you can arm yourself with the knowledge to keep you and your family from becoming its next victim. Skywatch TV is proud to announce the Time Bomb special offer. When you order Time Bomb from the Skywatch TV store, you'll also receive the Time Bomb Companion DVD. This incredible DVD includes special, never-before-released, off-the-record interviews with healthcare professionals like Dr. Ralph Umbriaco, Dr. Joshua Vance, and Dr. Matthew Sams on the current food crisis in the U.S., and tips on how to achieve your optimal physiological health. This DVD is nearly five hours in length and also includes the entire Skywatch TV Time Bomb television series with Joe Horn, Ali Anderson, and Derek Gilbert. But that's not all. You'll also receive Eat This and Live for Kids. This colorful, fully illustrated book by Dr. Don Colbert walks you step by step through how to begin teaching your kids to love the foods that will love them back. While out shopping, how to avoid deadly toxins in many common kids' foods and household products, what to feed your kids from preschool to preteen, healthy snacks they will love, and what supplements they'll desperately need, and so much more. But the health epidemic isn't just limited to humankind. Also included in this unbelievable special offer, Joe Artis Horn's best-selling book, The Dead Pets Don't Lie Expose, and Companion DVD. This shocking book and DVD collection sounds the alarm on the scandalous practices of the commercial pet food industry. Learn how the FDA is allowing big scams where detestable, poisonous pet foods are being passed off as healthy and causing pets to die prematurely. You'll learn everything you need to know in order to quickly read pet food labels and allow your pet to avoid these toxic ingredients. Sold separately, these items hold a retail value of over $100. Yours now for a donation of only $30 plus shipping and handling. Take control today. The Time Bomb special offer is your field guide to avoiding the deadly processed foods and ingredients that are creating a massive wave of health crisis in America. This information covers every member of the family, the adults, children, and even our pets. Begin transforming how you and your family eat and live now. The Time Bomb special offer. Order now at the Skywatch TV store online or call 844-750-4985.